So when you look back at your incredible career, what do you think of in terms of what you'd wish you'd spent more time on, less time on? You know how some people say, you know, I wish I'd worried less, or I wish I'd reached out to this person or that person. Anything that you can think of now that you think, yeah, I wish I'd done less of this. I wish I'd done less, whatever, it was a mindset. Oh, well, yes, yeah, certainly when I was, uh, it's not that I'm not serious now, but I was so serious when I first uh, started, which is a good thing, but um, there were certain things that I passed on because in my young mind, it wasn't serious enough. And it was, a, it was a huge mistake because there was a great experience there to be had. It isn't, isn't always about the quintessential part or anything like that. So in, in that way, I wish that I had uh, taken it just slightly less seriously. In terms of what you'd wish maybe you'd done more of, Anything? Oh, theater. And, and you know, and, and hope to, hope to do more theater. I wish I'd uh, stayed. I, I did some theater in New York. Uh, I wish I would have stayed to do a little bit more before, but I'm a California girl. It's hard. I wanted to be, I wanted to be home, so I came back. And you love the ocean, I understand. I love, yeah. yeah. I, my father uh, raised me around the ocean, and I was scuba diving and by the time I was 10 you know I was fishing ever since I could hold a pole and so I, I lived in Hawaii for a while and I have surfed for 25 years and scuba dive and all that sort of things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any analogy in surfing that applies to navigating an acting career? Oh easily. I love seeing all these people now that you know they're all surfers. Um, you know Matthew McConaughey, but I understand why I do because uh, you can only be in the moment. It's like rock climbing. I used to be a rock climber as well. You can only be in the moment when you're doing that, or you're going to get in, you're just going to wipe out uh, in in not such a good way. Uh, and one has to feel the the motion of the nature of the beast that you're on. And uh, so, yeah, I learned a lot, a lot about endurance and, and keeping my eyes open, yeah. certainly. So going back to the time that you were in American Graffiti, your motivation for continuing with acting, is it the same back then as it is now? Has no. it evolved? Mm -mm. I mean, the, the work, uh, it, was, it, was, it was always, about the work. I was raised in a really good, you know, Mount Tamalpais High School, Dan Caldwell, College of Marin, uh, where I met Robin Williams um, and uh, Harvey Susser and Jim Dunn. They, they gave us great tools. So when I did I Never Promised You a Rose Garden, I was pretty raw. I didn't have a lot of technique, but um, when I was that age, it was more like, oh, wow, you can, you can tell a story, I can express, I can touch people in a certain way. I didn't really realize that when I first got into it, Do you, you know? So, so that was a realization, that was a discovery. And how long did that take in did, terms of coming uh, to that realization? To that realization, pro well, I, Certainly it came with, um, with I Never Promised You a Rose Garden. It came fast and hard in a way that I was not uh, prepared for. But then once it all settled in, I went, oh, okay, I could, I, I could do this. this is, and there's a lot to be learned here. And that's the other thing. I was not good in school. I tried like hell, but I was not good. I was very dyslexic without knowing it. I think a lot of actors are. And uh, it was a great education for me. You know, it was a great way to learn about something and especially to express it in a certain way. It made it really stick, whatever it was that I was studying. So if you were to advise another actor, actress from the Bay Area mm -hmm. on coming to LA, and I've heard you say before that, you know, 
life has sped up so much, and I agree, I think we're at too fast of a pace mm -hmm. and at a detriment to all of us. But what would you tell that actor or filmmaker that's coming from maybe a place that's not as fast paced as in LA or New York in terms of their career and staying in the moment? When you have everything, you have Twitter coming at you, you have YouTube comments, you have instant updates about whatever in your Gmail. God, I don't know. I don't know what to tell them except that, well, first of all, lose the prejudice about LA or Hollywood. Just lose it because it's here. You know, the filmmaking is everywhere now. It's here, it's in New Orleans, it's in Atlanta, it's in North Carolina, it's everywhere. There is no Hollywood anymore. It's just an enigma now. So you can just forget all that stuff. And uh, I was I was not very good at um, uh, I'm still not very good at self promotion. You know all the Facebook and the Twitter. You know all the younger people are teaching me about that. So I would say if you can do anything, get somebody to help you with that. So that's not your focus. So so all that stuff is. Uh, it's it's a necessary mechanism, but it's uh, shouldn't be your focus. Your focus should be your work. Just do your work, and whatever happens from that, and find any way to do it. Like this idea that everybody's going to come and be famous is like ridiculous. It's are you gonna are you doing the work because you love the work and you want to give something? Then great. Then enjoy the hell out of it. And if you get to get a ride like I've had, then great. Enjoy it. But. Um, no, it's not about an end result. And lastly, what should audiences take away from the film after? Your role of Nora Valentino and the story, I, I know we don't want to give away the ending, but in terms of a message, what would that message be? Wow, that's a good question. Uh, what should the audience take away from after? Well, of course, whatever, however it speaks to them, that's what would be important to me. Uh, I would hope that it moves them in some way. I would hope that uh, because it's a story about actual people that they might be able to be a bit of a voyeur and, and peek in on something they might feel or see. Uh, and from the family, all these fat, I hope they take away that they enjoy seeing stories about people because that's what I thought we used to go to the movies for, <laughs> to see stories about ourselves or, or people we love and, and that everybody's doing the best they can. That's all we can do. But sometimes we see a role, uh, someone, and we, it's something in ourselves is sparked then by seeing that mm -hmm. portrayal, something like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I hope that um, I hope that they're moved in some way that they can understand someone's human frailty and fragility, the fragility of life, and that we all must face, and that we can get through it. <laughs>